So the first vocabulary word for today is a solution to an inequality. We defined a solution to an equation last class as a value that makes an equation true. So a solution to an inequality is a value that makes an inequality true. A value that makes an inequality true. So pretty much the same thing as a solution to an equation. We're just dealing with inequalities here instead. Now there's not going to be just one solution to any particular inequality. We're going to have what's called a solution set. A solution set for an inequality is all of the values. All of these solutions. So there will be more than one solution, or more than one answer today. When we put them all together, we create our solution set. So at the end of the day, if, if I give you the last question, don't answer me. The answer is five. Or the solution's five. I might say, well, that's part of our solution, but you have to give me the full range or the full solution set for all of the things that are included as solutions. I'll show you what that looks like before the end of the day. Don't worry. We do need to, however, review what the name of the four inequality signs we're going to use are. Uh, who remembers what the inequality symbols are called? A greater than. There's a greater, there's a less, there's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. It's hard to remember which one's which sometimes. Here's the way we're going to remember it. You see this uh, thing at the top of your paper that says leg up there? You see this first side of, of the shape? You see how it makes, makes an inequality sign? Mm -hmm. Guess which inequality sign that is? It's the less than, and it's next to the L. That's how we can remember. It's that part of the symbol. What about this side of the inequality sign? That's going to be my greater than. Okay, there's the shape for less than and the shape for greater than. Then there in the middle, guess what? What's the symbol? Equal. equal to. So we have all of our types of symbols we might use greater than, less than, or equal to, but this is an indicator for you that might help you remember which one's which. You can also take your left hand, so for most of you it's the hand you don't write with unless you're a lefty, and I want you to slam it on your paper, and then tilt it sideways just slightly. You see how your hand right there makes an inequality sign? Since it's your left hand, it makes a less than sign. So if you quickly need to remember which one it is, go left hand, less than. There's my less than sign. So we've tilted our hand to the side and it makes a less than symbol that matches the L part of leg. Okay, so let's label these in our chart. The first symbol looking at the leg, which, what's the name of that symbol? Greater than. Second symbol, what's that called? Less than. What? Less than. Those are easy, those are right in the leg picture for me. But the, sec the third and fourth one have a line underneath it. What does that line underneath change my inequality sign to? It adds the or equal to part. So this one, it's the same symbol, but it's going to be greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Which means the last one is called what? Less than. Yeah, less than or equal to. up for you. So those are the four symbols we're going to be using in this class today. So at the end of the, uh, at the end of the day, if we're solving an inequality and all of a sudden you end up with an equal sign, yikes, we got to make sure we're maintaining the fact that we're using inequalities, not equal signs. I know that's a good habit to like put it right there, but we're using these symbols today. Now there are words that are going to indicate these uh, particular symbols in word problems. Some words you might see for greater than is the phrase is more than, which is pretty simple. If you see something is more than this, you know you're going to be using the greater than symbol. By the same token, you might see the phrase is less than for the less than sign. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense until you see a real world example of it is the fact that when we want to choose the greater than or equal to symbol, we actually are gonna look at the phrase is no less than. 
I say my bank account has no less than $20 in it, that means it has either $20 or more money in my bank account, right? That's greater than or equal to, but I use the phrase is no less than. So by the same token, less than or equal to is gonna be the phrase is no more than. That's the phrase that indicates that I have less than or equal to. So if I say my bank account has no more than $20 in it, that means I have $20 or less in my bank account. Yikes. Less than or equal to. Now we're also going to be graphing these on a number line. When we graph inequalities or solution sets on our number line, it's important to include a particular dot and shading on this number line. It has to do with the direction we're shading, whether numbers are bigger or smaller, and if it's inclusive or exclusive. The two symbols that have no greater than, or, uh, sorry, have no or equal to part, so these two right here, their dot is open. That's my greater than and my less than sign. Their dot is opened. It's an exclusive symbol, which means we can't actually include the number we're talking about. I say list out numbers greater than five. You have to start at six, because you can't include five. It's not greater than five. But if I say or equal to, that's an inclusive list. So I'm going to use a closed in circle. It's inclusive. The way I like to remember this is that if you have to physically write down more to finish writing the symbol, how you see how these symbols have more to them since they have the line underneath them, then my circle also needs to have more to it. So I've got to fill it in. If you write more, you write more. The shading itself has to do with the phrasing. Let's say I make you a number line right here. And I'm, I'm going to give you the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right. I'm looking at the number 3. If I want numbers that are greater than 3, which direction do I look on that number line? To the right or to the left? To the right. Yeah, the numbers are bigger or greater on the right. So that means all of my greater thans are going to be shaded to the right. Because that's on a number line is indicating the bigger or greater numbers. So by that same token, if I ask for numbers less than three, which direction would you look on that number line to give me numbers less than three? To the left. To the left. So you are going to shade in your number lines to the left for both of the less thans. That's less than and less than or equal to. So there's like a weird looking smiley face down at the bottom of your notes, right? You see him? That's the inequality dude. Inequality dude is going to help me remember some of this information in a picture as opposed to a chart. So when I'm looking at this picture, I have an open circle next to the inequality symbols less than and greater than because those are the exclusive. They don't include the line underneath, so they're both open circles. Same reason over here on the closed circle, I have both the symbol greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Now, here's a trick I like to remember for the shading. If you don't want to look at a number line and think, okay, where are the numbers bigger? You can always use this, this uh, trick right here. You see how if I were to make this less than symbol into an arrow, isn't it facing the left? Less than symbols, I shade to the left. It gave me like an arrow. Same idea, if I look at the greater than, which direction is the arrow, arrow, air quotes, now facing? To the right. That's the direction I would shade. Same thing works for the or equal to's. If we still pretend like this is an arrow, which way do I shade the less than or equal to arrow? Left. Left. And how about the greater than or equal to arrow in air quotes? To the right. So it's a helpful trick. That's what I think about, so I don't have to think too hard. It's like an arrow, so it's telling me the direction I need to shade. Wow. In number one, it says, to solve and graph the following inequality, x minus 6 greater than or equal to negative 10. Now, the solving steps are going to be exactly the same as equations, which is what we practiced last time. So we're redoing those steps from last time, which meant that we started by drawing a line through our inequality sign. And looking to see if we need to move things from side to side using either distribution or inverse operations. I want 
with this negative 6 to move to the opposite side. What's the inverse operation I choose to do that? I add it. Add it to both sides so that now the x is isolated by itself. I let the same symbol drop down my, uh, my line. Don't change it to an equal sign because it's super tempting to do that. It's still greater than or equal to. Negative 10 plus 6, if the si uh, different signs are different rules, now we must subtract. Keep the sign of the larger one. Now we know the facts. Yes, I, I sing at the class in case you were wondering. Yep. So now we have the isolated inequality solution set of x greater than or equal to negative 4. The moment x is by itself, we're finished. We have now a full sentence here to explain our answer. This is hard to see without seeing it on a number line. So what I want you to do is put the number 4 in the center-ish of that number line and give me the numbers that are bigger and smaller than 4. So, oh, sorry, negative 4. So it's like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and then negative 5, negative 6, and negative 7. There's a number line that represents about the, the numbers that I'm using. So to see what this looks like, I now use that dot and shade you just told your partners about. Which dot do I use for the symbol greater than or equal to? Opened or closed? If you don't remember, flip. Closed. Closed. Yeah, closed. If you don't remember, flip your booklet close and see, see the front. This is a closed symbol. So I put a closed dot around negative 4. And for the symbol greater than or equal to, which direction am I going to shade in my number line? Right. Right. To the right. That means any number contained in my shaded region all the way on to positive infinity, which includes like 10, 15, 23. All of those numbers are now part of my solution. They all count as answers or solutions. This is my whole solution set for this inequality. We're gonna check our work this one so you can see that that's true. Somebody give me any of the numbers here but that's in my red shaded region. One. One, yeah, one would be there because if I went negative one, then it'd be zero, then it'd be one. Cool, let's pick one. If we fill in 1 for x to see if this is a true mathematical statement, we'd have the equation 1 minus 6 greater than or equal to negative 10. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. And is it true that negative 5 is a bigger number or greater, greater than or equal to negative 10? Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is a bigger number. That's a true mathematical statement. So we just checked our work, and we're pretty sure we're right. So that check your work idea still works. You can pick anything in your shaded region, anything that's greater than or equal to negative 4 to check your work. You could have picked 50. Would have worked as well. Okay, I actually want you guys to try number 3. So skip number 2 for a second. I want you to try number 3 on your own. Solve the equation. Try to graph it. You don't have to check just yet. If you'd like to check because you're a good student, that's totally fine too. You're trying number 3. We have x divided by 8 greater than negative 5, or x over 8. We draw our line down the center of the equation. How do I undo this division problem? And what am I going to multiply by? I'm going to multiply by 8 on both sides, so I'd have negative 5 times 8. Absolutely, you're correct. Okay, 8 over 8 cancels out, so I'd have x greater than negative 5 times 8, which is negative 40. x greater than negative 40 is my solution set. So what that looks like, this might be the hard part because I didn't number your number line for you. Here's negative 40, here's negative 39, negative 38, negative 37, and smaller is negative 41, negative 42, and negative 43. Do I put an open or a closed circle around 40? open because it's greater than and greater than also shows me which direction am I going to shade right. to the right very good so anything in the shaded region counts as now an answer question does negative 40 count as an answer no because no, it's open see it's not actually shaded in on 40 if it was closed it would be shaded in on 40 since it's open it's like it's not shaded but negative 40.1 technically would work. Sorry, negative 39.9 would work. So right up to 40, but not including 40. Let's try one that has a little bit more complicated steps, more so like what we practiced last class. If you look at number two, we notice that there is a number in front of parentheses, two times y plus four less than or equal to 10. 
What do we do with the two? What's that vocabulary word? I heard it. Say it louder. Distribute. Very good. We're going to distribute the two, which is multiplication. So we're going to multiply that two times everything in that parentheses, which should be two separate pieces. Don't end up with less than two separate pieces. We should do two times y, which is two y. Ooh, I forgot to draw my line. Or number two. And two times four, which is positive eight. I've done my distribution step. Woo. Woo. Once we get through with our distribution steps, we're on to our inverse operation steps. Do I want to move the two that's in front of the y or the eight that's added behind it? Eight. I want to move the eight first. So when I move it to the other side, I use its inverse operation. Subtraction. Yes, subtraction. This is 2y less than or equal to? Two. Absolutely. 10 minus 8 is 2. Our last inverse operation we use in this particular problem, dividing by the 2 that's in front of the y, we have y less than or equal to 1. That's the solution set. So, guys, these are the same steps that we did last time, right? Does this look familiar to you? Yeah, we're going to get really good at these steps because they're the same for both equations and inequalities. We get to graph this for ourselves. 1, 2, 3, and 4, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. Don't say it out loud. I want you to think it. Give yourself some think time. Am I going to use an open or closed symbol? Say out loud. Open or closed? Closed. Closed. Very good. And since this is less than, which direction is the quote unquote arrow facing? Left. To the left. So I'm going to shade to the left of that dot. Anything in the shaded region is part of my solution set. Any number in there I could use to check my work, it should be an answer, should be a solution. I'm going to leave two showing for a little bit, but I want you guys to come down here and try number four. Okay? Number four is very similar to number three. Go ahead and try that one. Okay, I apologize if I'm cutting off your thinking. But we'll go over number four now, see how we did. First step I would do is draw my line. And then I notice that there's a number in front of parentheses. So I draw my arrows to make sure I know that I'm going to distribute that number twice. Don't skip the arrows if you need it. Three times negative seven. Negative 21. 3 times positive x is positive 3x, less than 3. It's really tempting to accidentally switch that inequality sign back to an equal sign. I saw that a couple places around the room. Make sure you're keeping the, the inequality sign and not accidentally changing it back to equals. Now we have a couple steps left, our inverse operation steps. When I take the 21 and I move it to the other side, what has to change about the 21? It is positive. I add it. Very good. This would give me 3x less than 3 plus 21, 24. Last inverse operation is usually to multiply or divide. In this case, I'm going to divide by 3. Very good. This would give me x less than 8. So if we look at our number line here, we'll put 8 in the middle. That would be 8, 9, 10, 11. 7, 6, and 5. Don't say it out loud, but I want to think you to think it to yourself. Opened or closed. Don't say it out loud. Okay, now we can say it out loud. Opened or closed? Open. Open. Very good. That's an exclusive number because we just want numbers that are less than 8. So which side of the number line is less than 8? Left. To the left. Any number to the left on that number line all the way to negative infinity is included in my solution set. So, so far, literally nothing has changed except at the end, we've been graphing our answer. The rules have all been the same for inequalities and equations. Here's the one time the rules are different, okay? The steps for solving equations and inequalities are the same except we must flip, get it flip-flops, we must flip the inequality sign whenever we multiply by a negative number. or we divide by a negative number.
So we're really looking here for when we're using some negative numbers to multiply or divide. That's our indicator that we have to flip-flop the signs. Okay, that's what the chanclas are there to remind us, that we have to flip the inequality sign when we multiply or divide by a negative. I need two volunteers with good aim. One, two. All right, my two volunteers with good aim. I'm going to hand you legitimately some chanclas, okay? So their job for the rest of the class period is to be our chancla people. And if we have to flip-flop the sign when we're solving an inequality, they're going to take the flip-flop and they're going to chunk it at the board. Okay, you're not going to baseball throw it at the board because that's just asking for somebody to get hit in the head. You're going to throw it boop, overhand, but like with some effort. It has to hit the board. It can't hit any person. So make sure if you need to stand up to throw it, that's fine. They're going to remind us that if we multiply or divide by a negative sign, we take the chancla and we flip the sign. Okay, throw the chancla across the classroom. Please don't hit anybody, okay? All right. It, we got real close to hitting somebody today, and I really don't want that to happen. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna walk you through a few questions. Okay, and as we divide or multiply by a negative, those chanclas need to get flying so that we remember to flip our sign. Let's look at number five. Same thing. We're gonna solve and graph these inequalities. We draw our line. We've got negative seven y less than or equal to negative thirty five. Negative 7y are smushed right next to each other, which means we're multiplying. What's the opposite of multiplying? Division. Division. And what are we going to divide both sides by? Negative. We're going to divide them by what? Negative. Uh, what kind of number? Negative. Negative. Throw the chunk. Mm. Throw the chunk. Okay, it is. Okay. Oh! Oh! Are you okay? <laughs> you good? Yeah. Next time, let's have you move forward so that you're closer to the board with nobody in your line of sight. Same thing for you. Come. How about you go up there so you can be a chocolate person up at the front? Okay. I'll just throw it at the board. Throw it at the board. We're going to flip flop. All right, so we flip flopped the sign. Boop. It's going to flip over. And we now no longer have a less than or equal to sign. We're going to have a greater than or equal to sign. Because we divided by that negative number, we're going to remember to flip flop our sign. Because now we got hit in the back of the head with it. We're never going to forget it. So sorry. <laughs> Are we okay? Okay. Ooh. Yikes. So now we have y left. A negative 35 divided by negative 7 is a positive 5. Okay? Wow. Things are happening fast. Same thing, though. We still get to graph our inequality at the... Or graph our equation at the bottom, our solution set. We have 5, 6, 7, and 8. 4, 3, and 2. <laughs> Open or close symbol? Oh, it's, closed. it's closed because we have the or equal to part. And I'm going, am I going to shade to the left or to the right? No, right. Very good. The arrow is facing to the right. So we're going to shade it to the right. That's the only change that's different from equations to inequalities is that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to remember to flip that sign over or else your solution set will be incorrect. Okay, let's look at number six to try it again and see, and see if we can see it coming. We've got three less or minus two X greater than 19 as our inequality. We want to solve. Is there any distribution to happen here? No, I don't see any parentheses. I've got no number in front of that parentheses, so I keep going. The 3 is going to move to the opposite side. And when I move it, what does it become? Subtraction. Very good. Subtraction. Which means I have a negative 2x remaining. My greater than sign flip comes down. And 19 minus 3 is 16. What's the next inverse operation step we're going to do? Division. What are we going to divide by? We're going to divide by what? Negative. Everybody duck. <laughs> We're still not. There it is. We're going to remember to flip our sign. Thank you, Chancla people. So we take that inequality sign. That was much better aim. And we're going to flip it over. It's now no longer a greater than sign. It's going to be a less than sign. Other than that, nothing changes in what I'm doing. I still have the x being uh, isolated, and 16 divided by negative 2 is a negative 8. 
That part is still the same. The only thing that's different is that since we divided by that negative number, we flip our sign. So we can do our number line. Here's negative 8. Bigger than negative 8 is negative 7, negative 6, and negative 5. Less than it is negative 9, negative 10, and negative 11. Think it to yourself. Don't say it out loud. Opened or closed. We can now say it out loud. Open or closed. Uh, Does it have the line underneath open. it? No. Ah, open. Very good. If I write less, I write less. If I write more, I write more. Here's my open exclusive circle, and it's less than. Less than is left hand, so it goes to the left. Those are all the pieces of my solution set for this inequality. Honest gauge around the classroom. Do we feel like we could try one on our own or do you need to see another one with me? We got some extra views. We'll go ahead and try one more with me and then I'll let you try one on your own. I wanna make sure that you're prepared for it. Okay, we're gonna do number seven together and I'll leave number eight for you. So if you got it and you wanna go ahead of me, feel free. On number seven, we look at it, and we've got a number in front of a parenthesis. So what does that mean we have to do? Distribute. Distribute. Three times five and three times negative x. Oh, I forgot to draw my line. Three times five is 15. Three times negative x is a negative 3x less than six. I want to move all my constants or my good old-fashioned numbers to the uh, right side. So that 15 moves over. I'm sorry, I'm standing right in your way. Not bad. I move that over 6 minus 15 since I'm using the inverse operation of that 15 being positive. Then I'd have negative 3x less than 6 minus 15, which is... <clears throat> different signs are different rules. Now we must subtract... Keep the sign of the, of the bigger one. Now you know the facts. That's a bop right there. What are we going to divide both these sides by to isolate the x? We're going to divide it by a what? Duck, everyone. They're coming in hot. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, not great. We're going to get new chunk of people next class. All right. We flipped our sign. We divided by a negative number, so we have to flip-flop that sign. We now have a greater than symbol. And negative 9 divided by negative 3 is a positive 3. We graph it. We have 3, 4, 5, and 6, 2, 1, and 0. Since we're using the greater than symbol, it's an open circle on my number line shaded to the right for where the numbers are greater. All right, trying to prove it to yourself that you know it. You have number eight to try on your own. Ask questions to us or to your teammates if you have them. Sorry if I'm cutting your uh, thinking off, but we'll walk through it. We've got negative four x plus one greater than or equal to 16. So I start by drawing my line. And I notice I have to distribute. Now, don't let your waiter only visit the first person at this table. Your waiter has to visit every person at the table, so we have to multiply more than once. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Don't forget, distribution happens twice if there's two things in that parentheses. Everybody did great on this step. We added 4 to the other side. We'd have negative 4x greater than or equal to 20. And then we divided by negative 4. The chanclas didn't fly, but that's okay because we thought to ourselves, oh, wait, we just divided by a negative 4. The chanclas would have, fought, would have flown across the classroom. We all would have had the duck. And we have to flip our sign. So immediately after that step, your symbol should now be less than or equal to. Everything else stays the same. Negative 20, or sorry, 20 divided by negative 4 is a negative 5. And here's what my solution set would look like. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. Colored in because it's the or equal to and then shaded to the less than side, which is to the left. 
less than to the left. 